Again, this is part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. And we've been working, just playing around with images, different uh, compressed archived file systems, ISOs with from live CDs. And uh, so far, we've extracted the file systems from three different live CDs and put them on folders on my current uh, hard drive. And here we are. We have our folder called Core, which is uh, the uh, core version of tiny core which is at nine uh, megabyte ISO originally um, then we also have mint which is uh, uh, some version of Linux Mint I want to say 15 um, that file systems in there and Slitaz, which is another uh, small file system um, and today we're gonna be looking at chur rooting which is something you may have seen heard of before I mean some of you probably use it all the time I use it pretty much daily um, some of you may not know what it is or understand. You might have seen it before. You might have used it and not even really known what you're doing. Um, but basically, the chur root command uh, allows you to basically, within the shell that you're working in, uh, use another a folder that or partition or image uh, that's mounted um, that has a file system as your new root file system for within that shell. So what I mean by that is I can go into uh, my mint folder here and again list out this is the file system we extracted from the live CD so it's the full file system and what I can do as root or sudo I can do chur root I can give it a dot meaning this folder you can also give it the full path to a folder if you don't want to be within that folder and I'll say bash and now you can see my prompt has changed we're using my kernel from my system. If I do uname a, it will show me information on my kernel. You can see that I'm running a Debian kernel uh, 3.10, which is not what uh, the uh, file system here is using. And uh, also, I downloaded a 32 bit, and you can see that we're running a 64 bit. That's okay because 64 bit and 32 bit, it's backwards compatible. I wouldn't be able to go the other way. Well, I mean, there are ways to go the other way, but by default, you wouldn't be able to go the other way. So right now, though, anything I do at this prompt, it's using my kernel, but using this file system. So here's an example. If I exit out of this and I'm back into my regular file system, I can type in nmap. Because I have nmap installed, you can see the help screen for nmap starts up. But if I run my chur root again, chur root dot, meaning the folder, so you can, again, you put the folder where you're at, and bash, meaning we're going to run the program bash from this file system. You can actually run any program directly like this, but bash gives you the shell. Um, if I type nmap now, you can see I get a message saying uh, the program nmap is not currently installed. Uh, it's currently not installed. You can install it by typing blah blah blah. That's because it is no longer looking at my regular file system. It's looking at this file system. So essentially, even though I'm using my kernel with all its drivers and modules, any program I run is actually running within this. If I was to, to do um, app get install nmap, and hit enter, uh, it will download and install nmap. I'm not going to bother doing that. But it's not installing it to my system, it's installing it to that file system. So I can modify that file system in that way. I can then recompress it and put it on another live CD. That's one way of creating uh, custom live CDs. Um, but other ways that this is useful is, that, I mean, there's so many different ways it's useful. You can do full installs this way. Um, uh, there are uh, uh, programs for Debian called the Bootstrap. Uh, that's D-E-B-O-O-T-S-T-R-A-P. Did I spell that right? Uh, which we're going to get into later in this series. Again, a new video every Monday. Um, that will take a partition or a folder and allow you to pull down a file system from the Debian website or a server you set up yourself and then actually reboot into that system. But you can make changes using the chur root and set it up before you do the reboot. So you can actually install one operating system from within another uh, that way uh, using an empty partition uh, or image or other stuff. Uh, another thing you can do is you can, and this is a great use for me, is um, I have uh, three Android devices. I have two tablets and uh, a phone. Uh, both my tablets I bought, uh, one tablet came rooted, the other one the uh, manufacturer allowed rooting, and, the, and my phone I rooted myself. Once you have any Linux system rooted, you have root access. You can install chur root if it isn't already installed. Uh, 
through BusyBox normally, which we'll talk about more in future tutorials. And you can, as I do on my phone and tablets all the time, have a Debian install or any of these folders I have now, I can put them in an image or on a partition or in a folder uh, on the SD card or on the hard drive of those devices and I can now chur root into it and even though I'm running Android I can run a any program from Debian or whatever operating system I want now those are ARM devices so I would have to have an ARM install but as long as I have an ARM file system which you can get through Debian and we're gonna learn multiple different ways of creating them using uh, a cross uh, platform uh, uh, the bootstrap uh, we're also going to look at uh, doing it through oh, I've already done tutorials on QMU but I'll do a refresher on that through uh, a, a emulator but once you have the file system of, of the Debian operating system for the correct processor type you can now run Debian on any of those ARM devices or any of those Android devices uh, using ch uh, Um and the great thing about this is if you were to try to just install Debian on one of those uh, devices not only is it going to be difficult and you have to really know what you're doing um, but you also will have to worry about drivers where if you chur root from Android already you're still using the kernel and drivers so all your hardware is still working within the chur root but you'll have all the Debian repositories or Arch repositories or Gen2 repositories or whatever distribution you're using and we're going to do a lot of ARM stuff in this series um, available to you you know it's all the hardware is already going to be working you don't have to worry about all that uh, also doing uh, a chur root like this uh, on my desktop I can actually run GUI applications as well because I'm already running Xorg I could also start up something like Xnest which I've talked about in, in videos years ago and there's another program similar to Xnest which would allow you to run a GUI application within a window or another full desktop within a window or I can go out to my TTY which I can't do right now because that would mess up my recording here um, but I can go out to a TTY and start up a whole new display uh, for example on most Debian based systems Debian, Ubuntu, Linux Mint your GUI, your desktop is running on TTY 7 and you would hit uh, Control Alt F7 to get there uh, and you can go to your other TTYs, Control Alt F1, F2, F3 well I can go into to one of those other TTYs go into the chur root and I could actually from within Debian start up an X session using start X and pointing it to a display to a new display and I can flip back and forth between um, my Debian install and the the uh, in this case Linux Mint uh, file system on the same system using the same kernel and it's not like you're running an emulator you're just using the kernel and another file system so we're if you were to use an emulator uh, a virtual machine of some sort uh, you're going to eat up some processing power just running those emulators where you're actually running the actual programs within the chur root on your actual system. It's, 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 it's a really neat thing. I hope that I'm explaining it and I'm, it's just such a great thing. And it's not just Android devices. If you have a router that's running w, OpenWRT, if you create an ARM file system again for like Debian, you could put that on a flash drive uh, if you have a, a router that takes flash drives, which I do, or an SD card. I have a little $20 router that takes uh, that has a USB plug on it so I can plug in that and I could chur root into Debian and have a full Debian system running on this this router um, obviously you're limited to the resources the, of the hardware um, but any Linux system if you have root access to it you can create a chur root and then run whatever Linux operating system you want from there as long as you have a file system in the proper uh, architecture and we're going to learn how to again make your own um, so I talked a bit it wasn't typing let's uh, let's exit out of this so we're gonna go back out also uh, let's let's go back there was something we did chur root into here and if I was to ping Google right now you can see I can ping Google um, and that works with the Linux Mint but most of the time when you chur root into a file system from another operating system you're not going to directly have internet access right away I'm not really sure what's different about uh, the Linux Mint that uh, that uh, allows that um, but I'm going to show you if we exit back out and now if I uh, go back up one directory and I'll go into like the tiny core uh, 
and here I can do uh, chur root and dot. And now last time we did bash. If I try doing that now, you see we get an error here. That's because both uh, slitaz and tiny core are so small, they don't provide bash because it would add to the size of the operating system. So uh, even though I did bash before, it's usually a safer bet unless you know what uh, shell is on there is just to use sh because that's pretty much always on there. Uh, failed to. Am I in the right folder? Oh, did I? Well, I must have deleted that uh, that folder. That's okay. Not <laughs> mandatory. I thought that I left that there. I must have cleared it out at some point between videos. We'll go into our Slitaz uh, folder here. And uh, I will true root in here. Same thing. If I was to try to run bash, I get an error that doesn't exist. If I run sh, now I'm at an sh. And you can see if I type in um, uh, Taz, you can see... Uh, the Taz PKG, that's the package manager for Slitaz. But if I was try to ping google.com, you can see bad address. Now, the reason for that, as I was saying earlier, is there's some um, files on your system that are going to uh, require that the point towards hardware and stuff like that. Uh, mainly your, your dev folder, uh, your proc folder, and um, your sysfs. Uh, so let me exit out of this chur root. So before you, you, you mount the file system or have it in a folder. You go in there, and as you can see, this is the file system for Slitaz. What you're going to want to do, as root or sudo, you can say mount dash dash bind, and you can put this in a script. Like on my phone, I have this in a script uh, that will mount uh, this stuff when I run the script and then start up the chur root. Uh, what am I doing? I'm reading my notes from another thing. Uh, so we're going to bind dev with our current dev folder. Uh, we're going to mount uh, dash t proc to proc and proc. And then we're going to mount dash t sysfs sysfs to sys, which is this folder right here. So we'll hit enter there. And now that we've done that, I can chur root into sh and now i should hopefully be able to ping google oh there's uh, one other thing you probably want to do uh, at this point i could actually run uh, like udhcp and grab a uh, uh, ip address but there's a better way let me get out of this chart i forgot not only do we mount those things uh, we want to also copy our um whatchamacallit copy from etc a resolve that's what we want uh, resolve.config or conf and we want to uh, copy that to our uh, current etc right there that I believe will now allow us to chur root dot um, sh now let's try pinging google.com there we go. Now we can ping. Because Resolve, if we look into that, if you're familiar with the files inside uh, your system here, basically it's giving the name server, which is my router, telling it where to uh, look for for IPs, uh, converting uh, n uh, domain name servers is what it is. Okay. Uh, so... You can do stuff within the true root without mounting that stuff, but there are going to be some limitations if you don't mount them. Uh, so at this point, if I X out, you don't want to forget to unmount those things because earlier I was, oh, that's probably when I deleted the, the tiny core. I did, uh, I was like, oh, I'm going to re-unpackage this uh, file system. I did remove the has and I did that, which deleted everything in the folder I'm in but also deleted everything in my dev folder, my proc folder, and so forth, um, which wasn't devastating. It didn't, didn't mess up my install of my actual operating system, but I had to reboot things to stop working because those devices no longer existed. Because things in your dev folder and your proc folder, um, those are generated when the computer boots, uh, the boot process. And when we are churrooting in, as we're doing, we're skipping the boot process. We're going straight into the to the file system. So any files or folders that are created during the boot process aren't created on this file system yet. So that's why we need to mount them. So when you're done, you want to be sure to unmount uh, your 
dev folder, your proc folder, and your sys folder. Um, but that's a quick look at, uh, and quick, I mean, I babbled on for a while, at Chirrut. And we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with Chirruting. And I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a great thing. It, it's, it's something that makes uh, these Unix-based systems so powerful that, as I said, if you have root permissions on any Linux device, you can Chirrut, if, even if it's, uh, like I said, a router with very minimal... Um, tools if you can chur root and you can have that file system on a drive somewhere you can even i'm pretty sure mount a network drive if you don't have a physical drive there it may not be the most reliable but you could do that and then chur root into it you can now have a full system running uh, with all your tools from the repositories where like i said on a router you'll have openwrt or ddwrt which have some stuff in the repositories for networking and stuff but they don't have all the tools you're used to um, well, if you can chur root into uh, a full distro like Debian, Arch, Gen2, or whatever, as long as you can get an ARM file system from that distribution, um, you're good to go. And we're, like I said, we're going to be messing with a lot of that stuff in the coming weeks. So I'm very excited about this stuff. I think this stuff is great. It's, I, I, like I said, I chur root pretty much daily on my devices because Android by itself is okay for web browsing, but that's about it. Everything else I do uh, is through a chur root. And we're going to do a lot of fun stuff with ARM stuff and just fun different types of installs. Anyway, uh, comment below. I love comments, but the comment section is for comments. As always, if you have questions, the IRC channel is probably a better place to ask them. Uh, and that is if you go to my website, filmsbychris.com, Chris with a K, link in the description. There should be a drop down uh, under the social networking tab. I'll just look for something that says IRC. Click there and it will bring you to a web based IRC client. Uh, and in there you can ask questions. And as always, uh, I'm not always in there. Uh, there's usually somebody floating around, but you may not get your question answered right away. Uh, if you come in there, uh, it's, it's really great when people come in to hang out. If you come in an IRC channel, plan on being there all the time. The people who hang out there all the time regularly are logged in 24-7, even if they're not always at the keyboard. It's a great place just to talk and conversate, come up with ideas with each other. It um, doesn't mean you're going to get your answers, questions answered right away. Um, if you are enjoying these tutorials on, on different aspects of Linux, uh, we're kind of moving out of uh, most of my tutorials are on programming, and this is more just on the system itself. Uh, if you're enjoying these, definitely let me know by one, commenting below, and two, uh, liking this video. So that you don't miss any of these videos, be sure to subscribe. I also have different topics on Wednesdays and Fridays, and there will be a new video on this topic, on Linux operating system, every Monday. Um, so there should be an annotation on the screen to the playlist. Be sure to check that out. Check out previous videos if you haven't watched them already. If you haven't, you might be a little lost on what we've done today. Um, you can also probably see future videos if you're watching this in the future. If you get to a point in the playlist where you can't access a certain video, don't worry. It just means it hasn't been published yet. The next video will be published on Monday. Uh, I have to let you know that because people will always ask me, why can't I access this video? It's because I haven't published it yet. So um, be sure to check that out. Again, my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Whoops. And uh, I hope that you have... A great day.